do a video on one of my prized possessions of my firearms collection. This Narinko Mac 90. It is a Chinese variant of the Kalashnikov assault rifle. A little bit of the history of Chinese AKs in the United States. Um, the first Chinese AKs were imported into the United States in the mid-1980s. I believe those were the Polytech Legends. And uh, by 1989, I believe that um, the import of these types of rifles in this configuration was banned by George H.W. Bush uh, under pressure from some uh, California liberals um, to... From, uh, to, from my understanding, to uh, make it so any uh, foreign imported uh, rifles had to come through with um, thumbhole stocks and only five round magazines, as if that does anything. You, all you have to do to uh, combat that is just uh, place the stock and, you know, buy a standard capacity magazine. This is the original thumbhole stock that came with this Mac 90 rifle. As you can see, it's big, it's goofy looking, it's gaudy, but it doesn't, I mean, I could just picture myself maneuvering with this rifle. It doesn't, it doesn't affect function in any way, shape, or form. I could slap this thing back on that rifle and it would affect function in absolutely no way, shape, or form. But um, in the mind of a liberal, uh, putting putting this stock on, on the rifle actually changed something. Didn't do anything. Just put a goofy looking stock on a rifle that uh, inevitably got replaced by whoever purchased it. So anyway, George H.W. Bush signed that bill into law, and uh, it was some years after that, I believe, uh, by 1993 or 1994, uh, Bill Clinton, his predecessor, signed a signed signed into law an all-out ban on Chinese munitions. So when that happened, and that that predated the original um, Clinton era assault weapons ban. Um, I believe that that was 1993-1994 when uh, these rifles were banned from import into the United States. You may be asking yourself, why did they ban uh, Chinese munitions from getting into the United States? That is the funny part. Um, I've heard two different. Uh, I've heard two different stories about why. Um, well, the first thing is that that, that I heard is that um, some of these were making their way into the country. And uh, they were fully automatic, so you know that that they had to put a stop to that. Um, that was part of the thing I heard, and the other thing that I heard, which is probably uh, the truth, and it's kind of funny, they stopped the import of Chinese munitions because they didn't like the fact that China was uh, dealing arms to unsavory characters uh, around the world, and they just you know whoa. You know, got to put a stop to that. And I, I, I find that hysterical from a government that uh, sold uh, weapons to the Mujahideen to uh, fight the uh, the Soviets in Afghanistan uh, back when Ronald Reagan was president. Because the Soviets, they were our big enemies at the time. And then the same people we gave those guns to came back and attacked us on September 11th, uh, 20 years later. And 
also the same government that uh, sold weapons to the uh, the Ayatollahs uh, in Iran. That's funny. And also the same government that sold weapons to Mexican drug cartels to kill American citizens. A little uh, side note of that that, that that I find somewhat interesting. Um, the NRA backed George H.W. Bush in the 1988 election, but they did not back him in 1992 against Bill Clinton for signing that silly, ridiculously stupid uh, bill into law, you know, making, uh, like it changed anything, making making these rifles have to come into the country with uh, thumb hole stocks and five shot magazines, did absolutely nothing. But um, the NRA did not back him in 1992, and of course, everybody knows he lost the election in 1992, and it was some years after that that uh, there was a, there was a big uh, public controversy about uh, George H. W. Bush leaving the NRA. Um, he said it was because of some uh, ads that that uh, the the NRA had been running. That uh, I believe is probably partially true, but I also think a lot of it has to do with the resentment of them not backing him in 1992. So anyway, this is a Norinco Mac 90. Um, like I said, the uh, the original Chinese AKs that were uh, imported into the country were the, I believe, the Polytech Legends in the mid-1980s. But by 1989, that uh, George H.W. Bush bill had been signed into law, and um, any foreign so-called assault rifles that uh, made their way into this country had to come with, uh, I believe, five, it could be ten, too, five or ten shot magazines, and I know for a fact that they had to come with those silly thumbhole stocks uh, that I showed you previously. Um, so this rifle obviously was imported into the country after 1989 if it came with that thumbhole stock. Doing a, doing a little uh, research on the Mac 90 um, I, I was able to find out that um, they were first imported into the country in the year 1990. That's, that's where Mac 90 comes from, the year 1990. And they were imported into the country into that uh, configuration from 1990 to 1993 or 94, whenever that Chinese munitions ban was, uh, was signed into law. So um, after doing some... Uh, for doing some research on this rifle with the serial numbers, uh, I was able to find out that this rifle was actually made in 1993, making it uh, 20 years old. So it's a it's a pretty old rifle, and you know, like I said before in my AR-15 uh, A2 video, you know, Chinese munitions ban was signed into law, uh, Clinton assault weapons ban was signed into law, and you know what, rifle didn't disappear, you know. I'm standing here holding it right now, as you can clearly see. I wasn't even old enough to buy a rifle in 1993, as you can clearly see from looking at me. I'd have to be, what, almost 50 years old? So, you know, it does nothing. It does absolutely nothing uh, to, uh, to prevent people from getting access to firearms, these ridiculous bills that people try to pass and that have passed in the past. If they actually worked, I wouldn't be standing here with this rifle now, would I? So anyway, this is a Norinco Mac 90 that was made in 1993, and I was able to uh, buy it in a private sale in 2012, 19 years after it was made, uh, 18 or 19 years after it was banned from import, and I was still able to find uh, I was still able to find it. So that just goes to show you right there that uh, the gun laws don't really do anything now, do they? Um, ban you, you ban this. And uh, it's going to be here uh, today, it's going to be here tomorrow, it's going to be here 10 years from now, 20, 30. It's not going anywhere. For those of you that don't know much about the Chinese AKs, they are regarded as some of the very best AKs made in the entire world. Some people say they are the best. 
but they're always mentioned in the same conversation as the original uh, Russian AKs, the uh, Bulgarians, Yugoslavians, Polish. It's always in that conversation as some of the very best, very highest quality made AKs in the world. In addition to that, the Chinese variation of the Kalashnikov rifle is actually the most commonly used and most widely uh, proliferated uh, AK variant. And a lot of people don't realize this um, in the United States and pr probably, probably elsewhere people realize it, but um, a lot of people don't realize in the United States that um, when American soldiers would run into uh, Viet Cong in uh, Southeast Asia during the Vietnam War, they would more often than not encounter Chinese variants of the Kalashnikov rifle uh, known as the, the Type 56. The Chinese Type 56 AK is essentially the, uh, the grandfather of this rifle. This is a variant of the Chinese Type 56 rifle. And uh, some differences, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to lay down a European style AK uh, in, in just a minute uh, to illustrate the differences between the, um, the Chinese style AK and the uh, European style AK. Uh, some, of the, some of the principal differences are that uh, they use thicker gauge steel uh, on the stamped uh, on the stamp receiver. Now I am going to illustrate some of the external cosmetic differences between a Chinese style Type 56 AK and a European style AK. We will start with the fronts of the rifles. Oh, um, before we get started, um, that is a. I.O. Polish Sporter representing the European AK. All right. Now, European AKM, you will see that it has this slant muzzle brake and has an open front sight on the Chinese AK Type 56 style, you will see that this stamped Chinese AK does not have a muzzle attachment and the front sight post is enclosed with a ghost ring sight. The uh, Chinese uh, the Chinese AKs also have thicker barrels on the stamped Chinese AKs than the European style AKs. They also have a different uh, gas tube setup. Uh, the, the Chinese gas tube setup um, stayed the same when they went over to a stamped receiver. Um, they, it stayed the same like it was with the uh, original milled AKs. They, um, they didn't have the, uh, the ports running in the block. Uh, vertically they kept the uh, horizontal ports in the uh, in the gas tube here and as you can see this one has the traditional AKM gas ports in the gas block none in the um, the gas tube all right moving down the uh, the Chinese AK has sight graduations out to 800 meters like that of a milled Russian or European style AK. The, the stamped European style AK has the sight graduations it's kinda hard to see here, has the sight graduations out to 10 just like all other um, European style AKMs. I, to me this is an AKM because um, as well, a Chinese AKM, because um, the original uh, Chinese AKs were milled receivers as well, and then they they uh, they moved on to the stamped for efficiency, the same as uh, same as the Russians. Um, also, you can see the uh, the difference here uh, in the European style AK. There's this cut in the receiver. There is no cut on the Chinese receiver, uh, keeping it the same as the original 
Russian and the original Russian stamped and milled AKs and not moving to the the same as the the, uh, the stamped AKMs. Um, moving on, um, you can also see a very distinct uh, feature of the a very identifiable feature of the uh, the Chinese AKs is the very very uh, nicely polished uh, charging handle and uh, bolt that that sticks out down here you can see that uh, that's not the case and uh, also you can see that um, the rear cut of the receiver on the Chinese AK is slightly different. It's it, it's not quite the same angle than that of the European AK, which is why some of the uh, European style stocks do not fit um, the Chinese AKs, and uh, that goes that goes for the hand, hand guards too. Some of the European style hand guards do not fit uh, the Chinese AKs. Let me. Uh turn this bad boy over so you can see the markings so you know I'm not uh, making this up and this isn't some you know wasser or something like that um, Mac 90 sporter caliber 762 by 39 millimeter Norinco this one you see here made in China this one was imported from uh, B West Emporium or importing in uh, Tucson, Arizona. Accuracy. How did this rifle do today, accuracy wise? Well, I was very interested to find out, and I'm sure. Um, the rest of you would be very interested to find out that um, when when doing a, an accuracy comparison between uh, this Mac 90 and my uh, my Arsenal AKs that I showed you in a in a previous video, uh, I was expecting. Well, I didn't really notice it until I got home. I was I was expecting there to be like a uh, a significant difference. An accuracy, a significant accuracy advantage out of this rifle uh, in comparison to the, the Arsenal AKs because you know the Mac 90s are supposed to be of uh, uh, the pre-band Mac 90s are supposed to be of a, of a higher quality. And I'll show you my targets here. As you can see, they're smaller than uh, they're smaller than life scale. You can see that the. Uh, the size of the head and uh, the shoulder span is smaller than uh, smaller than mine. Anyway, so if you guys saw my uh, SLR uh, 101 and SGL 21 video, you saw um, you, you you saw me from a standing position shooting uh, shooting this target, and uh, those are the results: um, 29 hits, one miss out of 30 shots, 15 apiece, and. Uh, you know, like I said, from a standing position uh, at that distance, you can watch you can watch the video. Standing position at that distance, uh, you know, about 100 yards, you know, it's pretty damn good. So, anyway, this is the target today. Same distance from the uh, from the Mac 90, and uh, as you can see. It, uh, it, it looks tighter. It looks tighter from here, but I, I counted the holes, and uh, there were actually some misses south of the border on this target. And um, I, know, I, I know that they, they still would have been hits, but you mean, you know, you want to see those shots on target. But uh, what I noticed was that shooting the, um, the Mac 90 today and shooting the. Uh, the SGL-21 and the SLR-101 in my previous video, what I noticed today from the Mac 90 was that it shot low. Like, uh, like, you know, I, 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 that was, that was like the 12 o'clockiest hold of all, you know, 12 o'clock holds that, you know, that I've taken with one of these, uh, 
uh, type of rifles. In my opinion, this rifle grouped tighter, but shot lower than the uh, SGL-21 and the SLR-101. So that's kind of a trade-off. I mean, what would you rather have? Um, a, a rifle that groups identical to its sight path, but groups a little wider, or a, or a rifle that groups tighter, but groups lower than the sight path, and you have to hold higher uh, using Kentucky windage. Uh, me, I think I'd rather have the one that shoots dead on, but is shoots you know shoots a little uh, looser group. That's just me. You know, I just talked to somebody a minute ago that that had the opposite opinion. So you know, that's that's kind of a give and take, and there's really no wrong answer to that question. I don't I don't think reliability. Well. It's, this is an AK pattern rifle, um, kind of the 800 pound gorilla of reliable weapons. I mean, you don't really need to uh, say too much more about that. Uh, it's a proven, uh, you know, it's a proven rifle. You know, it's, it's, it's been used since the, uh, the 1940s. It's the most widely used and most respected battle rifle in the world. And it, it didn't get that way by accident. Durability, same thing goes. This thing is a tank. I mean, I, I don't really know uh, too many ways to get this rifle to uh, stop firing, short of, uh, I don't know, maybe pouring cement inside of it or something like that. But other than that, you're not going to be able to get this rifle to stop shooting. So uh, reliability and durability, um, as good as it gets. Ergonomics. Um, it's an AK, not the most ergonomic rifle, not the most, uh, uh, you know, not the most ergonomic controls, um, but it gets the job done. So, you know, ergonomics, just like any other AK, um, not the best in the world, but good enough. Simplicity. Hey, if you can find a, an easier rifle to break down and field strip than this one, um, I haven't seen it yet. So, yeah, simplicity, um, absolutely. This... This is about as easy as it gets a rifle to maintain and keep properly running. Accessories, well, there's uh, there's lots of them. From what from what I understand, the um, the fit of the uh, the Chinese AKs are a little bit different than the the fit of um, the European style AKs. So you might have a uh, <clears throat> you might you might buy some aftermarket accessories for uh, your Mac 90 if you if you can find one, I mean, they're, you know, they stopped import, uh, you know, t 20 years ago, and, uh, you know, so you're not going to find them new in a gun shop, but it didn't stop me from finding one uh, after talking to a stranger in a bar uh, just last year, but uh, anyway, uh, accessories, um, you might have to, you might have to look around, because from what I hear, some of the, uh, some of the stocks and some of the hand guards and stuff for the European style AKs do not fit these. But I'm sure plenty of I'm sure plenty of them do as well. So you know, just you know, look into that. Look on the internet, and uh, if you have one of the uh, if you have one of the slant cut Mac, uh, Mac 90s uh, with the receiver with the with the slant cut, um, there is a company online that uh, that makes stocks for it. So look into that, and uh, you know, you look on the internet, you're you know, you're 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 bound to find just about anything. So. You know, accessories, you'll be able to find them if you can find one of these rifles. Weight. Uh, this rifle uh, has a thicker receiver. It's a little um, it's a little sturdier receiver, and it's a little heavier. Uh, not too much, but uh, it is a little heavier than most of the AKs that you will find in gun shops uh, present day that are of a stamped receiver. Uh, the milled receiver ones are a little heavier than this one price. Um, I got a good deal on this rifle, a really good deal on this rifle, um, but, you know, most most of the time you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to put out a pretty penny for, for one of these rifles uh, because of the rarity and the quality. Um, they do not come cheap, believe me. You, know, you can look online if you can find them. Actually, none of these rifles come cheap right now. Uh, they're, you know, because of everything that's going on, they're freaking, uh, you know, Rifles that were, you know, eight hundred dollars two, three months ago that are going for two thousand dollars now. It's it's a joke, 
And you know what? Um, I think you ought to be hitting the head with a shovel if you're if you're paying uh, you know thirteen fourteen hundred dollars for a rifle that was you know five six hundred dollars two months ago. Track record. This is a Chinese. This is a variant of the Chinese Type 56 AK. Um, you want to look at track record. Uh, look up the Vietnam War. The uh, track record is exemplary for these rifles. Purpose of use. Um, there are many purposes of use for uh, these rifles. You can look at the history from Vietnam and see that you know it's it's it, it serves very very well as a, a combat arm and also. Um, I, you know, I had a great time shooting it today. I mean, this is a sporting video. Um, you know, this is also a sporting rifle, you know. Um, I'm not going to war with this rifle tomorrow. Um, I, I just enjoy shooting it and making videos about it. So, you know, it's a, it, it's a great, uh, it, it's a great collectible too, for one thing, because, you know, they haven't been, they haven't been made in, in 20 years. So if you can find one, it's a great collectible. But, um, you know, it's a, it's a great combat rifle and it's a great, uh, sports shooting rifle. I had a great time shooting this rifle today, just like my, uh, just like my other video in the, uh, with the AR-15A2. It's a, it's a vintage rifle. It's a classic. And I really, really had a great time shooting it today. It's a great sporting rifle.